their brother and sister, their friends of God's house. It's very important that we have this Bible study time because that's why you see what you see on this world. People move kind of like by the wind, left and right. When they are with one church, when, when they are in another church, when they go to church, when they stop going to church, but they don't know exactly, and their roots, spiritual roots, they are not in the ground solid yet to understand the Word of God. It's true that many people believe, like the Bible study, it's not important, or not so important, it's wrong. As a matter of fact, for us to understand messages on Sundays, when we have our regular service, I'm talking about an English language, it's on Sunday, because of not understanding. They are present, but they don't understand the Word of God. It is because they are missing this part. It's like you are just one third of yours is in the Bible and the other two thirds is outside. We believe in the entire Bible, in the Old Testament and New Testament. It's true that our time right now, that our generation lives in, lives the lives into the New Testament. However, should we reject or put on the side the Old Testament? Never. Because it will give us the sense of understanding why mankind needed to be where he's at and what God needed to do on his side for mankind to be saved. In my experience that I have with many different people when I speak or visit many different churches in different places, I can see some kind of a problem that some people, they are trying to go back to the Old Testament, live their life today in our time under the rules what was on the Old Testament. However, like I said, it's good for us to know and it's good for us to understand what does still apply and what is not applied anymore. Because if we don't understand those things clearly, then we can overlapping things and then we can having a problem. However, we don't uh, reject absolutely nothing from Old Testament but it's good to understand. However, let me give you an example so you understand what I'm talking to you right now about from the Old Testament. One of the things, God does not require for us to bring sacrificing as animals for our sins, like an Old Testament. This is one thing and very important thing. It's not, we don't need to bring any type of animal for our sins to be washed away. If we do want it to be as the Bible speaks to us to be, what we need to do, we need to confess our sin, pray, and then that, that sacrifice that took place for our sins is our Lord Jesus Christ. So that's, once that's done, it's done once forever, and nothing else can be done for mankind. That's what the Bible the list says. Before we get into this message that Brother Ty was just read it, I wanted to just make a little connection, little connection between verse number 8, chapter 8. I'm talking about chapter 8. Verse chapter 8 from, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, verse will be verse 20, 21 and 22 from verse now from chapter 8 Job chapter 8 verse 20 21 and 22 those three verses I asked Brother Ty to 
read those so because I wanted to tie this message of understanding to the message that we're going to speak right now. Behold, God will not cast away the blameless, nor will he uphold the evildoers. He will yet fill your mouth with laughing and your lips with rejoicing. Those who hate you will be clothed with, clothed with shame, and the dwelling place of the wicked will come to nothing. Amen. 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 Look what it says. It says, God does not reject the people. I'm trying to, to, to expand a little bit the meaning of this phrase. It says, God does not reject people who are living or trying to live the best as they can according with God's word. God will never do that. Instead, it's going to fill their mouth with joy and happiness and song. But their enemies will be covered with shame and they will perish. This is what friend of Job speaks to Job like to give him strength through the trying time that he's going through. One thing that I saw in the Bible, which is very important, and God's, God speaks to us for us to do those things. She says, rejoice with those who rejoice, but also she says, suffer with those who suffer. Many times we find that the people rejoice with the one who rejoices. But as soon as we go to a trial or some kind of a problem, a lot of the people take off. They don't want it to do it. They don't want it to somehow be part of it. They draw themselves back and said, you know what? I don't want it to get involved. I don't want it to know those things. And it is a disgusting way. I don't find it like that in the Bible. However, that means if we are one, we are one in everything. We will be faith as a brother and sister in Christ, as a friend of God's house. If when you are down, for me to run away. If I'm next to you and I see what you're going through. For me, this is what I understand God's word we are one all the way through. As you, because this is what our Lord Jesus Christ is giving us the understanding. We are one body. If your hand, right hand, get hurt somehow, are you ready to take your arm off just because you got hurt? It? Or instead you are trying to find anything you can to cover to uh, fix the problem this is what God is speaking to us that's why our Lord Jesus Christ is speaking about the many different ways because this is how we should be if we uh, the other way around I'm thinking about those very very large churches out there when they don't even know each other they walk in and out it's like you're going to a big mall you walk in and out, not even really saying hello to each other. I'm wondering what kind of relationship there is. 